What makes reaction kinetics so complicated is that the fused reactions simply go from reactants to products. There is often an entire network of elementary reactions that interlock. How does this mechanism affect the rate of reaction? Hello and welcome to FISCAM Basics, our topic today, reaction mechanism. How does mechanism affect the rate of a reaction? We will answer this question for the three simplest mechanisms that exist, reversible reaction, consecutive reaction and parallel reaction. So far we have only discussed simple reactions in which the reactants react in one direction to the products, such as the decomposition of ethylamine to ethylene and ammonia. This simple reaction follows the first order rate law. The rate is proportional to the ethylamine concentration. Accordingly, the integrated rate law is an exponential function. Rate constant k is linked to temperature. Knowing Arrhenius parameters, activation energy and frequency factor, k can be calculated for any temperature. In many cases, a reactant does not react to the product in one step. For example, a reaction order of 1.5 was determined experimentally for the cleavage of acetaldehyde. This reaction does not take place in one step, but comprises three elementary reactions. These three elementary reactions, which form kind of a network and may interact, are called the mechanism of the reaction. Each elementary reaction has simple kinetics, as described earlier but the interlocking of the reactions complicates the overall kinetics. We can even predict the reaction order for elementary reactions. Unimolecular reactions show a first order kinetic and bimolecular reactions show a second order kinetic. The terms unimolecular and bimolecular describe how many reactant molecules are involved in the transition state. Today we will focus on mechanisms that are made up of two elementary reactions. Reversible reaction, consecutive reaction and parallel reaction. An example for a reversible reaction is the conversion of alpha deglucose into beta deglucose, the so-called deuterotation. The mechanism consists of a forward reaction from alpha to beta with a rate law and the reverse reaction from beta to alpha with another rate law, shown here in red color. In the water model, a reversible reaction looks like that. Water is not only transferred from the reactant top to the product top with vessel 1, but also in the reverse direction with a different vessel 2. For a complete description of the kinetics of the reversible reaction A to B, we have to make up the balance of the elementary reactions. The reverse reaction, shown here in red, acts as a source for the reactant A and the forward reaction, shown here in green, as a sink for the reactant A. The overall change in the concentration of A thus results in K sub reverse times concentration of B minus K sub forward times concentration of A. This is the rate law of a reversible reaction which we can integrate and get the concentration time relationship. The concentration of A decreases exponentially, but not to zero, but to an equilibrium value A sub EQ. Likewise, the concentration of B increases from zero to an equilibrium value B sub EQ. In the reaction profile, we now have to take into account both the activation energy of the forward reaction and the reverse reaction. Incidentally, the difference between these activation energies is the enthalpy of reaction delta H, an important thermodynamic parameter. In dynamic equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. If we combine the two rate laws for equilibrium, we end up with a law of mass action. Equilibrium constant K equals forward reaction rate constant over reverse reaction rate constant. In the decay chain series of uranium, 
Radium decays into radon and this decays further into polonium. This is an example of a consecutive reaction. Radon is the intermediate that forms in the green reaction and decomposes in the red reaction. More generally formulated, A goes to B goes to C. The green reaction is the source of, for the intermediate B and the red reaction is a sink for the intermediate B. In the water model, we now have three bathtubs, A, B and C. We transfer water from A to B with vessel 1 and water from B to C with another vessel 2. The respective size of the transport vessel corresponds to the rate constant. For the overall kinetics, we have to make up the balance of the formation reaction of the intermediate and the decomposition reaction of the intermediate. This will result in this overall rate law, which can be integrated to get the link between concentration and time. The time dependence of the concentration of the intermediate is of particular interest. Depending on the magnitude of k and k prime, it shows a more or less pronounced maximum. The reaction profile of a consecutive reaction shows two maxima and one minimum. The maxima are the transition states and the minimum is the intermediate. Accordingly, there are also two activation energies. If the rate constants of the red and green reactions are very different, the slowest reaction will determine the overall rate. This is referred to as the rate limiting step. If the green reaction is much slower than the red one, the intermediate is said to be reactive. Here the steady state approximation of Bodenstein applies. The intermediate product has a very low concentration that does not change over time. Putadiene can add hydrogen bromide to either the 1,2 or 1,4 product. This is an example of a parallel reaction. The reactant A reacts in the green elementary reaction to product B and in the red elementary reaction to product C. In the water model, water is transferred from bathtub A to bathtub B and C using two different vessels. As usual, we obtain the kinetics of the overall reaction by making the balance of the two elementary reactions. In this case, both the green and the red reaction act as sinks for the reactant A. Therefore, the rate law shows two negative terms. By integrating the law, we get the concentration time relationship of both products. It is interesting that the quotient of the two product concentrations, B and C, is constant. That's Wigscheider's principle of constant selectivity. In the reaction profile of a parallel reaction, we see the reactant in the middle and, starting from this, two reaction coordinates to the right and to the left that lead to the products. If the activation energies and thus the rate constants differ very much in the parallel reaction, the fastest reaction determines the kinetics of the overall process, is the rate determining step. However, this only applies if the reaction is kinetically controlled, if we have a lack of thermal energy and time. In our example, the 1-2 addition product is the so-called kinetic product. It is formed faster and at low temperature and with a short reaction time, it is the main product. At high temperatures and long reaction times, different activation energies are no longer this relevant. Now thermodynamic stability decides on the main product. In our example, the 1,4 product is the thermodynamic product. It is lower in energy and stability. It is the main product at high temperatures and with long reaction times. The mnemonic here is CCK. Cold temperatures and catalysts will lead to the kinetic product. Let's summarize. In reversible reactions, the rates of the reverse and forward reaction are equal at equilibrium. The law of mass action can thus be derived kinetically. The reaction profile tells us that there is a simple relationship between activation energies and the enthalpy of reaction. With consecutive reactions and reaction intermediates, the steady state approximation applies. The concentration of this intermediate is approximately zero and does not change with time. With parallel reactions, the reaction with a lower activation energy dominates, provided the reaction is kinetically controlled.
More information about the topic you'll find in the book and in the lecture. Thanks for watching.